How's it going, guys? And welcome back from more Diablo 2. <clears throat> so, um, big updates. Uh, it is confirmed I'm going back to work full time. So, it means that the first Wednesday of April, which is basically around spring break, I will be heading back to work full time. So, uh, any game videos or any trailer reactions or anything like that are going to be on Monday and Tuesdays only. Maybe Wednesdays, but usually mostly Mondays and Tuesdays. So that means for any Diablo 2 videos, any game reviews and stuff like that, are going to be Mondays and Tuesdays only. Uh, I have a few games lined up that I know I can play on key mouse and mm. that I can play on mouse and keyboard, and the other ones I'm going to try to see if I can even work with the controller uh, because the configurations of <laughs> on a keyboard is a little old school. Um. So for our new Diablo 2 playthrough, we are doing Hardcore Mode, which I've only done once on my channel, and that was with a Rabies Fury Druid. But we're adding a twist to it. Um, the thing with Hardcore characters is that they're separate from normal characters, so I won't have any of my broken-ass items. So that right there makes it a big difference. The second big difference is, is that we're going to be doing a Diablo 1 play style now we did that with our sorceress which was a two-handed chain of sorceress to see that if energy shield worked like mana shield from diablo 1 which it doesn't this one however is going to be a diablo 1 style hardcore walkthrough so you're kind of curious what does that mean well there's a big difference between diablo 1 and diablo 2 in diablo 1 you still had your inventory however you only had your weapon your armor, your helmet, your shield, your ring, or excuse me, your amulet, and your rings. That was it. You got no gloves, you have no belt, you have no boots, there was no charms in that game, nothing. <laughs> so we're heavily restricting our paladin that we're using for that reason. Um, the other thing is, is that spells worked a little differently because you only got spells from books and scrolls. Of course, they changed that to Diablo 2 where it's actually an actual skill tree now. Um, so to make it even more difficult, we will not be using, um, elemental skills. Like Holy Flower, or Holy Freeze, and Holy Shock. Uh, because those main three right there will break the goddamn game. You know, it just makes the Paladin just ultimately broken, especially on normal difficulty. However, we can still use stuff like um, Sanctuary, which is mostly for undead, you know, or we can use something like Thorns. Uh, you can use Conviction if you really want to, but I highly recommend you don't unless you plan to make any mere cargo by so you just make a, um, an, a, an Orden, uh, which requires a Dream and Dragon, and then uh, I want to say like... I think dragon's a shield too and then you use conviction uh we can but we're mostly going to focus on using spells like might or blessed aim or concentration or fanaticism uh fanaticism is still gonna be your better one because it's more based for straight pure damage concentration is more based around your magic for your paladin so magic hammers uh, blessed names can be more based for your attack rating, so if you're making something like Zealer or something like that, and then Might is just going to be your very beginning thing to increase your damage. Uh, we can use defensive spells all we want, um, as long as it's not the three main elemental ones. Now, when it comes to actual combat skills, uh, there was no actual combat skills in Diablo 1, so... We're kind of be kind of limiting ourselves to that too. Uh, normally, I would make something like a zeal order, or use vengeance, something like that, or even something like conversion, which is kind of ass in this goddamn game. Uh, kind of works like mind blast, where if you hit an enemy a certain amount of times, it has a chance of actually converting them onto your side. Uh, if you want to mess around with normal difficulty with that, you can. But when you start reaching hell difficulties, it is not worth it because, especially if you're like have no no uh, potions or you're low on HP and you have an enemy that's converted for say like 30 seconds, after that conversion ends, they're going to be your enemy again. So it's kind of useless. Uh, so we're actually going to be using sacrifice. Uh, 
sacrifice is one that you really never want to use because uh, as you can see it takes eight percent of damage to self so kind of think like a thorns but it goes against you in a combat skill wise it says increases knock uh ooh, yeah, my glasses right here too before i start reading um increases accuracy and damage at the cost of life so well i just dropped my goddamn thing i'm gonna pick it up in this thing um, so you're basically getting more attack rating and you're going to get more damage out of it, but you're going to lose a certain amount of health. <clears throat> As you can see, two attack rating is 20%, damage is 180%, uh, but you lose like 80% of your health every time you swing. And since we're playing a hardcore mode, it's going to make things a lot more difficult. Um, not going to be using smites, holy bolts, or any of that. Uh, we eventually get to it, we can use holy shield, uh, and then for stat wise, you're not going to use anything for energy because most paladins usually won't. Even when you're playing something like a Hammerden, uh, by that time you should already have insight to help you out with that problem. Uh, health is going to be one th factor we're going to really work on the most because at eight percent health in each swing, we're going to need a lot of health, um, dexterity, and strength. Use what you need for your weapons. Uh, stick to standard sword and shield one for me right now. We'll go two-handed to see how that works. Um, the other thing that's going to help us out a lot too is going to be prayer. I might even pick up a prayer mercenary instead of the defensive one because it'll help regenerate our health. Um, meditation, you're not going to need. Cleansing, you'll put you another one too because even with sacrifice, poison is still going to hurt a lot. Uh, elemental resistances is your choice. Uh, vigor, people just use it more for like speed runs and anything else. Uh, self, or, or, Get like salvation redemption mix up redemption will probably be good in the long run because it, especially in like places like chaos sanctuary where there's gonna be a lot of enemies and then salvation to that um last i checked i didn't play on player seven when we did that so i don't think we're gonna play on player seven for this one either um just because we don't have broken s gear so it's gonna make it unfair for us as it is already so and uh, since the two shared stashes are completely different between hardcore characters and normal characters, uh, it won't make our paladin as broken as we normally would. So we're still going to be playing on players one, but it's going to be on hardcore, and of course we're going to be limited. So we only get our four main potions and then whatever potions we can carry in here. So no gloves, no belt, no boots, but we're just sticking to the, the uh, standard ones. Um, the other thing I can say too is, I'm, if I remember correctly, there was no secondary weapon either so no secondary slots for your uh character in diablo one either so that you're gonna be limited to that too and our character is ice dub toes <laughs> so that's gonna be our new walkthrough with all the way up to all i pretty much go back to work full time and then we'll just continuously put videos out from monday to tuesday so um hope you will enjoy the new hardcore walkthrough and uh we'll see how far we can actually get so we got pretty lucky with grinding a lot with our werewolf rabies fear druid but let's see how far we can get with this sacrifice paladin all right stay tuned okay let's do this uh, i was gonna do some game reviews but i think we'll see that for next week just to mix it up a bit so you may not give it any diablo 2 videos for that week just as a heads up so this is going to be very interesting. Um, what a lot of people don't know is with the original Diablo 2 loader destruction before uh, the Druid and Assassin were made for the expansion, mana potions could not be bought. You could only uh, find them. And in Diablo 1, you could actually buy mana potions from Adria, and you could actually buy re uh, rejuvenation potions from one of the healers that was in Diablo 1. So, they gave you an like, early start. Now, they also had like um, healing scrolls and stuff like that too, which eventually would be replaced into Diablo 2 with um, like higher level potions and stuff like that, but um, they also had identifier scrolls, they had town scrolls, stuff like that too. Um, they, I believe, did not have... Um, 
identifying books, but they did have tampering scroll books. They also didn't have keys in Diablo 1 either. Um, most chests were usually trap chests instead of locked ones. So they kind of changed that up too. Uh, I'm going to get might first. Uh, since we're playing hardcore, let's see. I think we'll just do the standard two, one. I don't have mana pots, I'm not going to worry about. And I've uh, been watching some of that uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. So far, it's not too bad. Uh, been watching that, I've been watching Borderlands 3. And I have a couple gripes about both of those games. Um, for one, for Dragon's Dogma 2, I kind of wish that they didn't do it as a parallel universe, so any spoilers. Uh, type of thing. I kind of wish it was an actual sequel. So after you pretty much defeated Grigori and you defeated Everfall and you defeated Damien, that they would actually proceed onto different lands of how they might have been affected by the dragon scumming and stuff like that. But instead, they pretty much did like a straight, like parallel universe and you know, the effects of so on and so forth. And it's just kind of like, eh. you know, I think they kind of instead of just doing the long run of actually. Making a uh, a brand new sequel, they kind of took a shortcut and decided, you know what, we're just gonna make it into a parallel universe. So it's kind of like my <clears throat> big disappointment, Dragon's Dogma Two, with that one. And um, with Borderlands Three, uh, if you've never actually played it, I always talk about Borderlands. Uh, kind of pissed me off because I'm already to the point where uh, they started killing off main characters and stuff like that. And spoiler alert, if you've never watched Borderlands Three. Uh, they end up killing off one of the characters from Borderlands 2. Her name is Maya, and she's one of the sirens. And they permanently just killed her off. And uh, Lilith is one of the ones from Borderlands 1, who is the other siren, and she loses her powers. But <laughs> I looked it up, and I'm like, why the hell did they kill off this certain character? And it turns out they killed off the character anyways. They were actually going to write it as her losing her powers like Lilith. However some new producers and new writers came into the play and decided, you know what? We're not going to go that route. We're just going to permanently kill off this character. So instead of, you know, doing the more reasonable way the players would have actually liked, they decided to just do lazy programming and writing just to kill off a character just for, for the shits and giggles. I'm like, that irritated the fuck out of me. It's like, you cannot kill off a favorable character because you want lazy writing in your goddamn goddamn game that like really irritated the hell out of me so let's see here oh this gets redemption and fanaticism i'm you, no one ever uses sacrifice when playing the paladin so um i guess we'll see how exactly how effective this is um but yeah so it's like that's just kind of like you did me and it's almost like Maybe getting any closer to everybody? Jeez. Is that much else to lose? One? That's not much at all. I only lose one HP. Well, that's not bad. Um, like 15, 20% left of uh, beating Borderlands 2 again. Except I'm going to beat it with the um, Siren. And most of the characters I looked up, I haven't actually played Borderlands since like 2016 it's almost like eight goddamn years since I played Borderlands 2 again and uh kind of kind of forget how difficult Borderlands 2 is in the later later the game is it's like it's a real grind fest but uh so far in Borderlands 3 like out of the 12 playable characters if you figured that each each Borderlands game has four characters in each one you know, Roland dies in Borderlands 2, spoiler alert if you never played that. And then Maya being killed off, so that's like 10 characters that are left right there. And then they showed Zero and Brick in Borderlands 3. So that leaves, um, that's 8 right there, you know. Or no, 
and they of course showed Lilith too so that means there's like seven so uh, kind of curious who else they're going to bring be bringing to Borderlands 3 and they're already talking about a Borderlands 2 so just going to make things quite or Borderlands 2 or Borderlands 4 I mean it's going to be quite interesting and uh post on the Twitter too you guys will not be seeing this video until Tuesday because I'm have a construction job tomorrow that I'm going to be doing so there will be no videos for tomorrow uh, charms I'm not even going to bother picking up since they don't exist so actually no no I won't I was going to say I'm going to pick up charms but um, no I'm not going to pick up charms we'll pick up charms once we actually beat this walkthrough if we live long enough to do so um, gems and jewels were another thing that did not exist in Diablo uh, 1 so there's that too and I don't know how shared stash is going to work on a hardcore character um, if that thing will even still exist if the character dies or not there's, there's basically there's a lot of stuff that was limited to Diablo 1 And of course, usually the like, beginning video will be like 30 minutes or some crap like that, so. What's my accuracy? 95. It seems like it, was, it seems to miss me, which is kind of really weird. And it'd be the same thing with um, putting gems into swords like that, since gems did not exist in Diablo 1. We will not be gemming up any of our gear either. So uh, Skulls were another thing that did not exist in Diablo 1. Uh, of course, they did have normal magic and uh, unique items. So. I just seen a scepter, I think. Hello. You didn't even hear the fan in the background, so I do apologize. Oh, did you know? Thank you much. Uh, scepters did exist in Diablo 1, but they were just extremely rare. Damn shit. It's gonna break anyways. Make sure I don't have any actual gear on me. Okay. And. Yeah, so I would talk about keys, but we already discussed that. Nice, sir. Thank you. Cool armor. Uh, stamina potions did not exist. Uh, strength and gas potions did not exist. Gems, I'm not gonna pick that crap up either. So we're basically going to be really limiting ourselves to um, what we even sell to. So, keep it pretty much close to the Diablo 1 cells as best as possible. What happened to that so called extra attack rating? He sure seems to miss a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure throwing items did not exist either, so like javelins, spears did not exist, 
uh, throwing knives did not exist. So when it came to Diablo 1, it was pretty much limited to like maces, swords, uh, daggers, short swords, two-handed swords, uh, two-handed axes, mauls did not exist. Did I remember correctly? No. No, mauls did exist. They just didn't exist the way you think it was. Um, like the two-handed mauls that I was usually wearing. Those did not exist in Diablo 1. However, uh, like the mallets that you would see in this game would be considered mauls in Diablo 1. So, Now, waypoints were another thing that were not a thing in Diablo 1. It was all about shortcuts. Duty here is done. Since uh, this would be considered, say, this entire area here would be considered, be considered, uh, can I speak, be Tristram, each area would have a certain shortcut that would be connected to this town. But since Diablo 2 does not work like that, we're still going to use waypoints. So, waypoints will basically be our shortcut. Theoretically, too, if I really want to make it more difficult, running was not a thing in Diablo 1 either. Uh, it was just strictly like fast walk, but uh, that would take way too damn long, so we'll keep running in here for now. We don't want to like really drag out the video, but... If I want to go really stick along this, uh, orbs did not exist either, so I'll ditch those. Uh, when it came to um, sorceress gear, only staffs actually existed, so you can still use staves and stuff like that um, since they are a form of staff, but uh, that's pretty much as limited as the sorceress got. Does this thing go up? Okay, still stay remains at 8% health, which is always good. 20% attack rating, 9,595. So it does increase attack rating by quite a bit. Which is weird, because it doesn't show up blue. Huh. 22 to 41 damage, and we're only level, what, 4? That's quite a bit. The order welcomes you. Hmm. Ooh, shit, I apologize. I might just use that, actually. And I won't. <laughs> I'm like, that's got elemental damage on it. I might just use that. Nope. Alright, let's go kill a little turd over here. Ooh, you got a party and a half over here. Dude got one shot. It was like there was no extra swing in there. He just went over and just went whap. You know what? I will be right back. I do apologize. It's an emergency. Okay, we're back. I think we're already getting close to like. We're in like 23 minutes in or so. Because I'm here we go find uh, where Blood Raven's hanging out. And then we have a video there. Yeah. 
and uh, gold was another thing too. You can max out at five thousand gold per uh, per thing, but it would be a stack in your chest. But thankfully, they have this, so we don't have to worry about that. Expecting more damage from sacrifice, but it's personally not that much more. I mean, the attack animation is kind of a little iffy, though. We got Blood Raven here. There's Blood Raven. Goddamn allergies have been a pain in the ass too. They just recently started up. It's like, yay! Um, let's go kill some here real quick. Get our level and then more of the video. So I'm getting my level here. There we go. Let's see what are we five. Uh, since sacrifice is going to be our only main one, and we're not getting this until twenty-four, I got to worry about that. I'm not a big fan of thorns. It doesn't seem to really work too well as it is. And we get this at might come in handy if we can dish out enough damage for Endarial. <laughs> but we can always reset our skills anytime we want to, so. 2342. Alright, so we're going to end the first video there. Uh, this should be roughly close, about 30 minutes. 25, 30 minutes somewhere in there. Um, so this is going to be our new walkthrough. Put out videos until basically until the new schedule kicks in, so. Uh, but hope you enjoy the Diablo 2 walkthrough, Diablo 1 style, hardcore walkthrough. And the reason I chose the Paladin, not the rest of the ones, is because in Diablo 1, there's only three classes, Warrior, Rogue, and Sorcerer. And since we would put in these ones, I would have to be either Amazon, the Sorceress, or the Paladin. Since the Paladin would be the closest one to a war instead of like the Barbarian would be. So, um, that's the reason why I chose Paladin. So, uh... Continue to enjoy the first couple of videos with I Stub Toes. <laughs> and make sure to drop a like, leave a subscribe, the comments below, and make sure to check them all out. Uh, see you guys.